we're going to use the following balanced chemical equation to calculate a theoretical yield. And once we know the theoretical yield, we are going to know what the limiting reactant is. And then we will also calculate the percent yield because we're going to see that an actual yield has been given. So we, if we look at this problem, we're asked the percent yield and we're given one, two, three values here. So in order to keep things straight, if we'll just write uh, each mass underneath each formula. So we have 25 grams of carbon disulfide, 40 grams of oxygen, and we have 2.4 grams of SO2. And if we look at that, it says that that's how many grams of SO2 is produced. So this means that this is the actual yield. If we're ever given a value for a product, then that's definitely going to be an actual yield. So in order to calculate the percent yield, we're going to need the theoretical yield. So we're going to take each reactant and do two separate three-step calculations. And we'll take reactant one which is 25.0 grams of CS2. We'll get out the periodic table to do step one, the molar mass. And the molar mass of CS2 is one carbon plus two sulfurs. That, the masses of those add up to 26.15 grams. Oops, I got it in the wrong place. And, and that's, didn't do that on purpose, but the gram has to go down here. So we have grams of CS2. 76.15 grams of CS2 per one mole of CS2. And I caught that because my grams have to cancel. Now we're going to go to the balanced equation and one mole of CS2 produces two moles of SO2. And we, that means we don't care about the carbon dioxide. And the problem asks us the percent yield, uh, and it gives us this SO2 as the product that we're interested in. So from the balanced equation, the ratio is 1 to 2 because of that. So 1 mole of CS2 makes 2 moles of SO2. And so that is step 2, the balanced equation. Now step 3 is the molar mass of SO2. So another big fat one, and SO2 is the mass of one sulfur plus two oxygens. That ends up being 64.07. And we'll come back and calculate that in just a minute. I'm going to set up the other problem and make sure all my units cancel. So we're there. And now we've got to take the other reactant, oxygen, and calculate how many grams of SO2 we could make. So 40 grams of oxygen. And oxygen weighs 32 grams for every big fat one mole. And then from the balanced equation, we still are going to have a two moles of SO2 in the numerator. So we have to have the same product here. And now we're canceling moles of O2, so that 3 comes from here. So 3 moles of O2. Again, step 2 is always the balanced equation or the ratio of the uh, ingredients to products in the recipe. And the last step is going to be identical. So one mole of SO2 always weighs the same, 64.07 grams of SO2. So if we do these two calculations, I should have done that first, I guess. 25 divided by 76.15 times 2 times 64.07. So we've got enough CS2 to make 42.1 grams of SO2. 
And so we don't know if that's going to be the least amount until we do this calculation. 30 divided by 32. And if we do this, we get 53.4 grams of SO2. So in order to calculate the percent yield, which is what the problem asks us for, we need the theoretical yield. So we're going to cross out the big number. This smallest value is the theoretical yield. That means that CS2 is the limiting reactant. We weren't asked for that, but um, anytime we have a theoretical yield, which will be the smallest amount of product we could make, we're going to know that the theoretical yield is determined by the limiting reactant. In other words, the limiting reactant limits how much product we can get. And so now the percent yield, this value, the actual yield has to be given to us. So to do the percent yield, and this is of SO2, that's the actual yield, which is 22.4 grams, divided by the theoretical yield. And that's going to cancel the two units. So once we do that, we get 53.2%. which seems like a lot of work for one problem. But in order to determine a percent yield, we have to calculate the theoretical yield. So remember, in that type of problem, the theoretical yield is calculated, and the actual yield is given in the problem. And this would be, for example, like the aspirin that we weighed out in lab.